Hello, welcome to the Grid Trading Series. Today I have two things that I have mentioned in earlier videos. Uh, the first one I'll cover is that in the last video I added incremental volume sizing and I said that I would try that without averaging the trades. So just increase the volume and still allow trades to close at each level as they normally would on the base grid trader. Uh, the second is where I said when I did introduce the average close price I said that it gave me an idea for something I wanted to try, so I've been working on that and I'm going to do that in the second part of this video and show a variation on that average closing price. If you've just started watching with this video, I am building on code that has already been created in earlier videos. There is a playlist for the entire series, but you don't need to watch every video just to get to the beginning point here because many of the videos simply implement a suggestion and then I go back to the base code again to start with the next. There will be a list in the description to the video that shows how you can get to this particular video through the stages of actual code development. So if you want to just go through from the beginning and see how this code has been developed, check that list in the description and then you can watch just those videos. And now let's get straight into the code. Now beginning with just incrementing the lot sizes. Uh, the last version I had was version 2.021, so I'm going to make a copy from that. Now the next thing I will do, uh, there was an input here, the average profit, which I don't need now because I'm not doing the averaging, so just remove that input. And then the rest of the changes will be in the leg class. I said once before that this was not a good name for a function to close all, so I'm just going to change that now. The next change is in the on tick close. I don't think I need to perform a recount at each tick here, so I can just remove that. And in fact, I want to return this basically to the same process that I had in the initial versions. So I've removed the calculations for the average price. And I also don't need this test for if profit open is greater than minimum profit. because I don't have the minimum profit now. Should be no change in the on tick open. But for the closed profit trades, I'm not looking at average profits here anymore. So I will just change this. So the minimum exit price, I'm adding the open price for the position to the size of a level. So I basically want to close each trade at one level size above the price where it was open. So above for a buy and below for a sell. And then I'm simply checking if the current close price is less than the minimum exit price, then I haven't reached the exit price yet and continue. And remember this LT, this is not actually less than, this is less than in the direction of the trade. And then just close the position and I think that should be everything let's just see if it compiles first that had no errors so I'm going to assume that that works and we'll go and do the test if it doesn't work in testing then I'll come back and fix it so my inputs are all standard buy and sell a trade gap of 100 I'm, I have a volume increment factor of 0 0.01 so that means the second trade will have a volume of 0 0.01 higher than the first trade and so on uh, the increment trade count, I'll increment every trade. Actually, I think at the last test I incremented every three trades, so we'll leave it at that. Order size 0 0.01 grid trader. All right, so let's run that and see what results we get. Well, the test is finished now. Uh, it had no problems, so I've done everything correctly. But there's still a big gap between the equity and the balance, so there's still quite a high carry cost involved in this. But if we go and compare the actual numbers, Remember that the base test had a profit of 5,021 and the average closing test with no increments had a closing at a profit of 3,593. This test has a total net profit of 66,464 from a $10,000 deposit. So we've achieved quite a lot of improvement there. The drawdown absolute though 4,149. So that puts it out of the running for my qualifying trades. And that's because, as I mentioned before, I set this rule based on running a prop account through xrating or rating.com. So this has much larger drawdown. 
But if you're running this off your own account and you want to take the risk, there is a big reward to be had. But let me just point out, the only reason this is happening is because I'm trading larger volumes. There is nothing special about this trade. These trades are still closing at the same point they were in the original grid trader. It's just that as I get more trades open, they become bigger trades, and so I'm making more profit on each one of those. In fact, if I were to set the inputs, if I were to set this volume increment factor to zero, then this would look exactly like the original. Just have it in the back of your mind there that if you want to have something like this, you can have that incremental growth and achieve a very large profit at a very large risk. I think the one advantage this has over simply trading a bigger volume on the base grid trader is that because this is trading larger volumes as you get more trades open, they tend to be trades that are further away from the mean and therefore more likely to come back and make a profit. Where if you simply traded large trades all the time, you would have a lot of those larger trades open at the extremes, the ones that I've talked about earlier, that get left open, so the highest buys and the lowest sells. And so now let's move on to the second part of this video. When I made the video showing closing all the trades at an average price, I said that I had an idea that might be an improvement on that. And this is the idea. Instead of trying to close all trades at an average price, I try to close the trade that's most out of the money, which would be the highest buy or the lowest sell, and average that with trades that are in profit. So if you can think of an entire grid of, say, buy trades, depending on where the price is, the bottom trades are going to be in profit. And obviously the trade furthest at the bottom is going to be in more profit than the others. If I add the profit on those trades to the loss on the one trade that's at the top, and I can come up with an average total profit, then I can close that one leading trade with all of those trailing trades. So let's start. I'm going to make a version 2023 for this. So I'm basing this 2023 version on the 2021 version that had the volume increment but I'm not going to be using the volume increments. First change in the inputs, I'm removing this average profit target. You can retain this if you like, but I'm going to remove that and I'm just going to use the level points as my profit. So I want each trade to make an average of, by default, 100 points. I'm going to add some more global or global within the class variables here. So the average profit will hold that average that I've calculated based on the certain number of winning trades plus that one losing trade, and the head ticket will hold the ticket number for that one losing trade. I'll change this again, and it no longer needs a price. In on tick close, I'll still be calling recount, although I'm going to change that. I don't need a minimum profit. In fact, I don't even need a price close. So if that average profit that I've calculated is less than the level size. So remember, this profit isn't the actual profit on the trade. It's the profit in terms of the distance that the price has moved. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it points because I'm converting it back to the double that is the currency level. But uh, this is the average profit in price movement. And if that's less than the level size, which is also in price movement, uh, the input is in points, but I convert that back to a double. So if I haven't made enough profit, then I can just return, return true. And if I get to this point, then I have made enough profit, so I'm going to close all of those trades at the average. So I'll change this close all function now to being the close average. So I'm getting price close function returns the current closing price for trades. So that's going to be the, uh, the bid for a buy trade and it's going to be the ask for a sell trade. Then the maximum price open is the price close or the level size behind the price close. So subtract 
level size from price close. Remember this subtract function is going to be price close minus level size for buys and it's going to be price close plus level size for sells. So what I'm saying here is that a trade, the open price for a trade must be at least this amount for that trade to have made sufficient profit. So in here, after the select statement, if the position info ticket is not equal to the head ticket and the position info price open is greater than the maximum price open, then I can just continue. So that will go down and go back to the head of the loop again. The reason I have this here is that I do want to close that head ticket and I expect that that's in loss. So it doesn't need to pass this part of the test, but any trade that is not the head ticket has to pass that part of the test. It has to have at least that minimum profit to be able to be closed here. And that's all I need then. So I just grab the ticket number uh, and that's really just for convenience. I could easily just use mpositioninfo.ticket in here. I'm just grabbing it here because it helps sometimes with diagnostics. And then I close that ticket. And that should close everything that is in profit by that amount or that is the head ticket. And I've already taken care of the condition that I want to do that here in the on tick, where is it? On tick close, where I'm saying if the average profit is less than the level size, I just return true. So I'm not even going to call close average unless I know that I want to close those trades. So now the difficult stuff happens in the recount function. I'll initialize those two additional variables I created. So I have the same two variables declined here for price close and price or maximum price open because I'm going to be performing the same checks on trades in the recount functions. I'm just going to change these variable names to make them a little more meaningful. They're actually head price and tail price. And now to do this, I have two loops through the positions. The first loop, I'm simply looking for that head trade. You'll see some code that relies on the first position being the most recent and the last position being the oldest, but that's not always true. Uh, two reasons for that. Firstly, you may be trading multiple symbols, and so the oldest may not be the first trade because it's on a different symbol, uh, or it might be a trade that wasn't placed by this expert. And the second reason though is that the order that positions are returned to you is not guaranteed. Typically, you'll find that the oldest position is the first that you'll come up with in a list, but that's not guaranteed and I don't want to take a chance on that. So I'm actually going to have a loop where I'll find that head trade and get some other information. typos in there. So as I loop through, I'm grabbing the open price for the trade, position info price open. If the head price is equal to zero, meaning we haven't set it yet, or the current price open is greater than the head price, then it means I've found a trade that is ahead of that existing head price. So head price equals price open. And then I set the volume open to the volume of that position, profit open, is the volume of the position multiplied by the difference between the current closing price and the opening price for that position. And the head ticket equals the position info dot ticket and the count is one. 
So there's no accumulation in here. I'm just looking for the lead trade. Every time I find a new one, I'm simply resetting all of these values based on what I've got in M position info. So now the second loop I'm going to go through and I'm going to specifically exclude any trade that is this head ticket because I don't want to add that in twice, but I'm only going to be looking for trades that are in profit by at least the amount of this level size. And I'm going to average those together. Now, the reason I don't care about trades that might be in profit by less than that is because they can only bring the average down. So as I said, I don't want to count that lead ticket twice. So if the ticket number for the ticket that I'm looping through here is the same as the head ticket, I'll just continue. And again, if the open price for that position that I found in this loop is greater than the maximum possible price open, that means that it isn't making enough profit. So I'll just continue there as well. So the volume then is just the volume for that position and the profit is the volume multiplied by the difference between the current closing price and the opening price. So this is a weighted average that I'm calculating. I'm multiplying each level by the volume. So by the time I end this loop, I have the total profit open and the total volume open. So then just to get the average profit, I divide the profit open by the volume open. And then these statements were already here for setting the entry and exit prices for the next trades. So that should be it. By the end of this function, then I have an average profit, which is weighted average profit based on volumes of the trades. That tells me how much total profit I'm making with all of the trades that have made at least, is at least M level size of profit. If I add all of those together and get their average plus the loss that I might be making on the leading trade, and it's possible that I am making a profit on the leading trade, but whatever it is, I want to add that into the mix of the averages. And then provided that total or the average of all of those trades is greater than the, it is, the total level size, then I will close all of those winning trades plus that leading trade. Now, just to make sure I haven't made any typos there, let me do a quick compile. Oh, that should be M head ticket. And that should be tail price. All right, let's go and run this through and see what happens. As I said, I'm not going to be using the increment, so I'm just going to set that to zero. So that chart is certainly different. I don't know if it's better in terms of carry costs than any of the others, but it is different. Uh, you can, if you look closely, see that there are a lot of little points where it's taken certain amounts of profit out and closed, obviously, that losing trade to try to keep the equity and the balance curves closer together. But there are still points where there's a significant drawdown. Look at the actual numbers. The uh, total profit of 3,069 comes below the average price closed profit of 3,593, so holding the trades until everything closes at an average will generate more profit, but not significantly more. The absolute equity drawdown though at 526 is less than the average price close drawdown. So it's significantly less, 526 compared to 870. Um, I'm going to place it on the chart below the average price close simply because both of them fall inside the criteria of less than a $1,000 drawdown. And this is in terms of total profit below the average price close, but it might be more useful to you. And there are things you can tweak in terms of this. I did take out the target profit. If you wanted to set a target profit that was different to the level size, then you can do that. But I think this is a reasonable approach to closing out those leading trades without having to wait until you get a full average price. And I suspect that the carry cost of this approach is less than the carry cost for the average price close. Now at this point, I've covered all of the major suggestions that people have made for grid trading. Um, I'm going to go through some of the 
minor alterations that I've had suggested uh, and do those in some short videos. And I'm also going to be looking for ways to combine these to come up with a better approach. But I won't be concentrating on the grid trading approach after this. I'll be going on to a different series of topics next uh, and interleaving then some of the follow-ups on the grid trading. But I hope you have had something useful from the grid trading series. Uh, if you've had something useful from this video or any of the other videos, then please click the like button. And if you want to see more videos, click subscribe and then click the bell icon to be notified when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.